Hey everyone, I got a question for you. What are you doing for putting up food for this next big chapter? Most of us know we're gonna see more inflation, more hyperinflation. Many reports out there are saying we're in a recession. And then there's other reports that are saying we're gonna be in a recession 100%. So what does that mean? It's gonna get a bunch worse. And worse than that, economists are saying that we're headed towards a depression, which would be very, very bad. So with that, food shortages are heavily expected. So what do you need to be ready for more inflation and food shortages? Today, I'm showing you one thing that we did, and it's huge, coming right up. Welcome back to all of our great subs. If you're brand new here, like news that affects you, prepping tips, emergency preparedness, how-tos weekly. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date. Let's jump into this one. So like I said, we took a big step, a huge step on long-term food storage and preparation. We made a big purchase, but I got the best bang for the buck and I'm gonna show you how and why. We also secured ourselves with a year's worth of meat from small local farmers. That's right, supporting small farmers. And when I say small, I'm talking about tight niche, they can only handle so many people at a time. And that part right there is gonna save us a year's worth of inflating prices. It's gonna save us from probable and likely food shortages. And then we have a safety net. In case the grid goes down, this video might give you really good information. It may even inspire you to do the same. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a couple great tips regardless. That way you don't lose your frozen food when the power goes out, the grid goes down for an extended amount of time. Lots of cool tips, let's get going. Okay guys, the big purchase, which isn't too bad because I did my shopping around, is a commercial size freezer. We're talking about a 49 cubic foot size freezer. This will hold a lot of meat. As you can see, we've got some of our salmon in here, but we just got this thing. We're yet to fill it up. Okay, so first of all, it's not as expensive as you might think it is. Now, growing up, I always thought a big, huge, stainless commercial freezer like this was gonna cost you like 10 grand. Now, for starters, this isn't some type of sponsored video where they sent me this thing for free and I'm gonna make a bunch of money off this company. I paid for this thing. But with that, everything that I talk about and stuff, I'll always leave Amazon links and links to that kind of stuff down in the description so you guys can do your own research. But why did I pick this one? It's a 49 cubic foot Westlake. Now, like I said, I remember these things being like 10 grand, then I saw them for 8,000, but I only spent $2,600 on this thing. And trust me, a lot of the comparables out there are right around that six to $8,000 range. And I nutted it down to this one and one by Arctic Air. It comes in at about $3,000. But before I get into a couple of those comparables, the reason why we bought such a huge freezer is because we're buying a year's worth of meat from those local farmers. You might wonder what we're buying. We're gonna buy a half of a beefalo. Have you guys ever heard of a beefalo? It's a cross between a buffalo and a cow. I guess the meat's supposed to be super good, but we're gonna get half of one of those and it's gonna be a ton of meat. And then we're gonna get a half of a pig, a huge pig. We're also gonna get a full size lamb. And in our little network circle group up in our valley, we got a butcher who's gonna take care of that so I don't have to do that part. But guys, we're talking about securing enough meat for an entire year for our family so we don't have to worry about it not being in the stores, we don't have to worry about those food shortages, and we don't have to worry about these inflating prices getting worse and worse on us over the course of a year at least. So we can hope that it's gonna get better in a year, right? And if not, we can at least know that we locked ourselves in at a certain price and we're not gonna have to pay inflated prices, hyperinflation prices. I've got this freezer right here that's chuck full of salmon right now. And it's still good to have a little chest freezer like that because they don't draw a ton of power. So you can easily run these off of one of those larger generators, the solar generators, a lot easier than something big like this, but we still have a solution if the power went down. But back to the comparisons and why I chose this specific one before I get to those tips for you. Like I said, I narrowed it down to this Westlake and an Arctic Air. 
This one was about 2,600 bucks. The other one was about three grand. But what this one had over the other one, along with $400 worth of savings, much better warranty. The reviews on both of them were pretty good. I read through every single review out there. Pretty comparable on the reviews. But like I said, this one had a way better warranty. Two years on parts and labor. And this thing had a powerful compressor and a six year warranty on the compressor. Which six years on a compressor and the two years, that's pretty darn good for a warranty. That gives me a sense of security. It's got a digital display. I think it goes down to like negative 20 or something like that. We've got it set at negative eight. You wanna take another quick look inside. It's got LED lighting down both sides. The door stays open and then when you shut it, it swings tight. And then what it does after that is it vacuum seals the door, which is kind of cool. I never knew it did that. The other nice thing is the bottom of this thing has some burly wheels, like little tractor tire wheels. And at 400 and almost 50 pounds, it glides with ease and can lock wherever you want to put it. Okay, so enough about the freezer. You guys can check it out down there if that happens to be something that you've been kind of toying around with, but with how much inflation has been just knocking people out. We've always had the dream of buying a half a cow or buying a cow and buying a ton of meat from farmers and just having it stockpiled. We've never done it before like that. So we are now. So I reached out, talked to the circle of people, our communities, and found out who was raising certain animals. A lot of people, some people raise beef. Some people raise beefalo, like I was talking about. Some people raise just lambs. Some people do just pigs and so on and so forth. And a lot of these folks do this to make extra income. They do this to secure their living off grid. And most times you'll pay market price for this stuff, but you're gonna know that it was farm raised, grass fed, everything natural, opposed to maybe the meat they're labeling as it made in the USA, but maybe it comes from Brazil opposed to the meat they're adding color to make it look more like the meat that you're looking for, opposed to the meat with all the preservatives in them. And for a business commercially selling, they're having to jump through so many hoops. They have to do their meat a certain way. It's gotta have all these injections and the stuff that they have to do to meet USDA regulations is getting a little sketchy. More the reason I feel better about supporting my local farmer. More the reason I feel eating the meat that I saw him raise in his backyard. Like I said, it's getting weird out there and us making this investment, buying a year's worth of meat is making us feel really good, really secure about the upcoming months, especially going into this winter. So with that, I know some of you are saying, what if the power goes out on that big bad boy? Well, before I give you the tips and solutions to that, which I know a lot of you have freezers out there already, let me know down in the comments below if you guys would like to know more information on how I found these local farmers, how I sourced out these folks that sell cattle, that sell lambs, that sell pigs, so that I can help you guys get into these circles, find these folks, so that you too can maybe start buying some better quality meat, support local, and get ahead of this inflation and possible food shortages. I'd love to give you guys some of those tips. If you're interested, I'll even take you to the farms and show you what it looks like. I could probably even convince a couple of them to be on film. But like I said, I know some of you guys are like, catastrophe happens, crisis happens, world crisis gets even worse, power goes down, EMP. For whatever reason, your freezer ain't gonna work for an extended amount of time and all that stuff is gonna go bye-bye, go rotten, you're gonna lose it. What do you do? Well, in that case, I've got videos showing you guys how to pressure can. So you can do pressure canning. It can be as easy as using a propane heater outside. When the power goes down, you can still pressure can. You can prepare that food for long-term food storage in mason jars. Our other option is the freeze dryer. I've got a handful of videos showing you how the freeze dryer works. Now, in my opinion, that is the easiest way to preserve food long-term and it's fantastic. In fact, we had friends over last night and I was ranting about how good our slow cooked chicken was in the freeze dryer because I just did a video the other day showing you guys how to make that rocket stove and I had some of that freeze dried slow cooked chicken for lunch. Oh, it was so good and I was ranting about it. Well, I served it up. I I took the I took the mar I took the mylar bag, cut it open and said you guys got to try this. And we served freeze dried slow cooked chicken from the freeze dryer out of the mylar bag 
to our guests and they loved it. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're gonna pull the trigger and buy a freeze dryer. You're thinking, well, that sucker runs off of power too. Yes, but that thing can run off a generator long enough for you to preserve all your stuff. We've ran 20 pounds of meat through our freeze dryer at a time. All right, so if you've got a larger solar power generator, gas power generator, you can operate that freeze dryer long enough to preserve everything in your freezer so that you don't lose it. Along the same lines, you can run a dehydrator off a small generator. With saying that, you have to have a good plan and you have to have a backup plan and you have to have a backup plan to the backup plan. That way, you're, when you're sitting like I am, you don't have to worry about this scenario or that scenario because you've got your bases covered. So anyway, guys, I was really excited to show you this. We're super pumped about all the meat that we're gonna buy from the farmers and I'm looking forward to telling you guys about it. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you guys think about our little operation, what you wanna see, and keep prepping, keep learning, keep doing. We'll see you guys on the next one.